Hello and welcome to the 13th in this series of Write Connect How To tutorial videos. My name is Guy Rounds and I'll be taking you through this week's subject which will deal with how to create animation procedures, where they sit in our animation hierarchy and additionally what are some of the options that come with creating procedures. Now for those of you who have been following this series of tutorials in order, you will know that we have already produced tutorials on animation sequences and animation steps. In both of those tutorials we mentioned that there is a specific hierarchy for animations in deep exploration and with this tutorial we get to the top of that hierarchy with procedures. So a quick recap. To create an animation then the workflow you need to go through is as follows. Firstly you need to structure your assemblies and sub-assemblies as you need them to move in the animation. Now this might be different from the structure of the original CAD model which Deep Exploration will open by default. To do this you can use the group and ungroup features of the right mouse button menu or simply drag and drop components in the scene into different folders. Additionally in this process you need to make sure your pivot points for individual components and sub-assemblies are in the correct position. For example they might need to be moved from the default position to the centre of a shaft so that the part or sub-assembly can be moved or rotated around that shaft. Tools for this job include move and rotate pivot points and the first three options in the right mouse button tools menu. Now it's very important to make sure that this aspect is correct at the beginning as changing the pivot points of components or sub-assemblies later in the animation process can cause undesirable results. Next is to create the individual sequences using the record keyframes button and the move and rotate tools. After that you can bundle these sequences into individual steps and you can have as many sequences playing one after another in each individual step or none at all. And then finally you have procedures. A procedure is a collection of steps each playing after another to create a full animation. Now procedures are easier than sequences or steps because they are basically created for you. Once you create a step, it's automatically categorized into a procedure for you. So I'm going to show you an example of how procedures are created and how you can export full animations into video files. So this scene that you can see on the screen here needs another sequence and step created to finish it off. So as a quick recap, I'm going to create that sequence and insert it into a step. As before when we've covered this, you need to have the animations panel at the side here, your animations control at the bottom here, and your 3D editor toolbar, which you can see at the top here. For this sequence, we'll need the shaft to simply move away from the casing. And I'll create a new sequence, edit the name and duration in seconds select the part hit record keyframes and the move tool and move the component into position and then deselect record keyframes If I go to the Steps and Procedures panel, you will see that any steps that are created are automatically categorized into this default procedure. And it's this procedure that makes up the final animation. Once the step is in place, we can either play each step individually by using the playback controls that feature on the thumbnail, or the controls at the top here. But if you want to see the entire procedure with each step played one after the other, you need to go to the controls of that procedure, which can be found by right-clicking on the name of the procedure. Here you have access to controls that will play. You also have access to other options here. Many are the same as the ones you will find by right-clicking on a step or a sequence, such as duplicating, reversing and copying to other procedures. You of course also have the option to create and delete different procedures here as well. At the top of the dialog box are quick access controls to set the procedure to the end or to the beginning. And at the very bottom here you have the procedure properties. If we take a look at that dialog box we can see there are several tabs and you will notice the ones that are present here are the same as the ones you will find in the model views and also steps properties dialog box. 
If you'd like more information on query or metadata, you can refer to those tutorials for more information. The one that is different here is the Subtitles tab. So any descriptions that are entered into the Steps dialog box can have text size, font and colour edited here as part of the entire procedure. So if I just change a couple of these options, then we will see these will be part of my final animation later on. Now when I save this RH file, my procedure is going to be saved as part of that file. And I can of course watch that entire procedure in Deep Exploration. If I take that RH file and open it in Deep View, right hemispheres, free viewing software, I will be able to see that entire animation there as well. We could also export the animation as part of a 3D PDF and have the animation viewable that way. However, I'm going to show you here how to export the animation as a video file. Again, by right-clicking on the procedure name at the top of the panel, you can see here I have the option to render to raster or video. I want all frames selected here. And if I go to settings, I can see all of the different video codecs that I have installed on this computer. Now the codecs you have here will be dependent upon what video playing or video editing software you have installed on your computer and what operating system you are using. Now Deep Exploration will come with this one I have highlighted installed and I found this one to be the best but it's definitely worth experimenting with these to see which one gives you the best visual results compared to the final video file size. I can also change the render settings here and you will notice that this is the standard render dialog box that's been covered in the rendering tutorials. Here we can choose the render engine to use, the size and the resolution. I'd recommend the settings I have here to start off with and then you can adjust them as you go if you find you need a higher resolution or smaller file size. And then we can just hit save and the video will be rendered to my desktop. We can see here in this dialog box the progress of the rendering is shown. Here we see the total frames needed to be rendered for this and how many the system has done so far and the estimated time to completion. Once that's done there will be an AVI file on my desktop as you can see here ready for me to play and possibly use on a website or upload to YouTube. And you will also notice that I've added some extra steps onto the end of this video and that it features the changes we made to font, colour and size of the subtitles. So that wraps up this particular tutorial video. We hope this has been of some help to you regarding creating animations and animation procedures. We're going to produce some more tutorials on the entire workflow for creating animations, so look out for those coming soon. And if you would like to see some examples of animations created in Deep Exploration, then please check out my profile, which can be found on the list of contributors on the Deep Exploration blog. My name is Guy Rounce, thanks for watching this 13th tutorial in our series, and please let us know if there are any Deep Exploration subjects you would like to see covered in these videos in the future.